That it's a long story, but it's a great one. Yeah, we got to have. Uh, yeah. oh. so, all right, let's talk about Michael. This guy? Uh huh. I mean me. Mike Meadows. I I don't know. Do you prefer to be called Mike? Uh, everybody besides my mom calls me Mike. Mom, Dad, and Michael. Or they, okay. They call me Mike. My mom calls me Michael. I was saying Michael because I'm sort of I feel like a father. <laughs> Professional. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, Mike is probably fine. Yeah. If you okay. slip up and Mike, call him dad during this, that's fine too. So Michael Meadows is live in studio. Mike. Mike, Michael, Mr. Meadows. He prefers to be called Mike. I, I respect just, that. That's what I called him earlier then. And I messed it up. I'm trying to repair the damage I've done. I'll, so. answer, I'll answer it a lot. Okay, cool. No, so uh, my good friend, my, my, my very best friend on earth, Mike Meadows is in studio today. Appreciate Welcome it. in, Mike. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Yeah. As thanks. soon as I heard that this was a thing, I said I got to get on it. Really? But, yeah. Immediately, I, you were in. I love it. Any any kind of any kind of anything. I'm a fiend for a good time, and this seems like a great time. So. Wow. Yeah. That's the way to live life. Yeah. Anything, Is that true? Anything that brings a smile to anyone's face, I can probably find some sort of joy for it in myself. Okay. So, you That's know, something. If somebody says, explore. "Hey, you know, we're racing pigs," like I'm, I'm not into it. But I'm sure it's a great time. So, a hundred percent right. Yeah, and I get asked this all the time. It's like, how do you get family funded pay all the way over to the other side of like, how is it, Jeff? Every time we go on a, a trip or something, you just happen to know somebody somewhere. Whatever the thing, like both answers are the same. Actually, it's because you just say yes to everything yeah. all the time. That's it. Yeah. Yes, man. I think that's just be yes. Yeah. Yeah. I learned that from Sarah. I wasn't that way before. Yeah. I think yeah. It's a Jim Carrey movie too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say it's yes. true. I yeah. mean, not to jump it off a cliff, but well, yeah, there's... experiences. Yeah, sometimes it's jumping off. Sometimes it's running with the bulls. I, I, bulls, I skydiving, do. bungee jumping. Yeah. Now sometimes that's really uncomfortable, but you just do it. And, yeah. And man, but nobody. What a way to live. Yeah, nobody is gonna knock you for having a fun story to tell, and that's why I kind of started looking at things as like if I if this is gonna be a good memory. It's going to be something to tell down the road and I can relate to somebody with it. Let's do it. Yeah. You know, so. you know, we recently were asked kindly to leave a um, short term rental stay. Okay. There was a group of us there. Someone else made the reservations. What? Who's we? Uh, there was a group of us. Non village caregiving related. We were just asked to kindly exit the premise. Some friends you run a little trip, weekend trip with? <laughs> yeah. Okay. They were like, we, we're going to need you not to be here. I think uh, I remember hearing about this. Yeah. You were in Tennessee or something? Uh, sure. Or no, Charlotte? Yeah, or? it doesn't matter. So okay. we we were asked to leave this this place. We didn't tear anything up. I think what happened was there was a misunderstanding about the occupancy of the of the place we were staying. And so, How did, many people did you bring in? I don't know the full details of the story. Oh All God. I'll say is that I <clears throat> happened to be there when when the person was like, yeah, we're going to probably need you guys to go ahead and, and head out. <laughs> and so uh, I was like, and, and people, especially the person that was in charge of the reservations, was devastated. Like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry this happened. And I'm sitting there like, if you would have told me I'd have to leave one night early but have this story, I would take that. We are at a NASCAR event right now. <laughs> I would take this story every single time because like there was an inconvenience that we had to leave a little early, but the, but how we got there was the, and so that's why like when people are like, Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, this ruined the trip. I'm like, this is going to live in my mind forever. And that was a way better deal than what we were up against. Like we, right? we recently went to an office to visit and our rental card didn't work out. And we had this crazy adventure home where we rode on a minivan with wings to, to the airport and like all kinds of crazy stuff. And, and oh, I'm so sorry that happened. I was like, I'm not like, thank God there was nothing <laughs> waiting for us. I'm glad it happened. We had a blast and I got some really cool pictures. So, yep. Yeah, you got to be a little adventurous, I, I suppose. So I, I think that saying yes to experiences and people, and again, like, right, racing pigs to somebody could just invite you over to their house for dinner, something simple. Yep. Well, like, there's a little bit of social anxiety there that I understand, like, whoa. But your first thought shouldn't be, what's our excuse going to be yep. to not do it? Mm. It's just be like, well, okay, let's just... We'll probably have fun. Anytime you do something like that, you look when you leave, you're like, that was really nice. Yes. I'm glad we did that. Just do it then. Yeah. yeah. Because if you're saying no to stuff all the time, I'll even go farther and be a jerk about it. Oh. I think that it's actually 
Well, let me put it from a positive light. When you say yes to everything, it's actually respectful of other human beings and an acknowledgement that there's something to be enjoyed and learned from everybody out there. Maybe they're not like me or different than me, but you're not the center of the freaking world. Like, learn something from this person. Have a different experience. Say yes to some things. You might like it. It's a big world out there. Yeah. I had a realization that um, sometimes when an opportunity or a situation arises and my brain would want to tell me no, you know, I want to stay in my comfort zone. But then it comes to like, if I can get over that in my head and put my body in the situation, I know that I've been faced with a, a bunch of situations I didn't want to be in, but my body got me through it. And so if I can just put my body in the situation, I know that I can even, you know, I'll be all right. Yeah. It usually comes, like you said, it comes out on the, on the good side. I get a story from it. I meet new people. Almost always so, a positive experience. Yeah. How tall are you? About 6'5". Six 6'5"? Five. Six five. Yeah. My goodness. Yeah. Athlete? Yeah, I played uh, college soccer at Concord. Um, if I knew I was going to be 6'5", I probably would have focused on basketball. But Wow, it snuck up on you? you know. Yeah. I was um, like six foot going into my sophomore year, I think, of high school. Okay. Around there. And then wow. I just grew like four inches into my junior year. And yeah. it was too far to turn back now. Something you, around, I could have the timeline wrong, but yeah. mainly to like avoid the conversation where like you have this, you know, 70 year old guy who's like, well, you're, you're one tall cup of glass. And then it's like, yeah, where do you play basketball at? And I was like, I played soccer. And he almost gets mad. Yeah. He's, he's like, he's up, so yeah, he's yeah. like, what are you doing? Yeah. And so I, I kind of, I kind of like, there's been one time I made up a story and said I played at Toledo because I could just tell this guy was going to get furious if I yeah. said I played college soccer. And, and why did like, you pick Toledo? Because it's not like if I said I played at Michigan State, then he's like, oh, you probably know Tom is, you know, yeah. all these things. So Toledo, unless he grew up in the town of Toledo, he's not going to know anything about it. Right. And in that case, I'm just dealt a bad hand and I got caught up on a lie and it is what it is. So That's... and that was all made up to not want to like kind yeah, of I just annoy to, someone else. Yeah, because there's so many times people like they're just baffled that I played soccer, which I understand. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. <laughs> Those people need to I get it. calm down. Yeah. yeah. What position did you play in soccer? I played center back. No, um, I mean, it's hard to win a header in the box against yeah. you. Yeah, I played center back, moved to midfield my senior year. Brandon Stacey actually uh, coached me my junior year. He was the one that put me on defense. Oh, so he's a lot older Hated. than you. Yeah. Well, sure. Mm -hmm. he's, old, he's older. Yeah. Brandon recently made fun of the way I was dressed and my age. So I just, just a little throwback to Brandon. Don't look up. Just focus on the interview. I'm getting ready to. So, I, I mean, yeah. I could, okay. Go on. Let me ask you this though, Michael. Did you mm. know that Aaron has now turned 39 years old? This is the last Didn't. year he's got before he hits that number where whenever we're sitting here and I say, like, you know, like it'll be a very young guest, say 24. And I'm like, well, you know, we're a lot older. And he always goes, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah. you're a lot older. Yeah. Guess what? He's <laughs> less than a year away from 40. Yeah. You're getting into the Fs. You got 40s and 50s coming up. Mm. Yeah. I just and uh, on that side note, um, so the, the podcast had a great run. August of 2025 <laughs> has been announced as our final episode. Uh, August of 2025. So how's he look to you? Is it because you can't be a 40-year-old podcaster? Is that what yeah. it is? Yeah. Yeah. Let me ask this. Uh, he looks good for his 39. Doesn't great. He? Oh, thanks. I yeah. appreciate it. I appreciate yep. it. Oh, don't look at my hair. I saw that look up. What do you think I'm going to say? About I don't it? know. I'm just ready to move on. You made me sing publicly recently, and I'm ready to move on from this. Well, my girlfriend says she's found a gray hair back here the other day. Um, Let's spend a moment there. I have not really got to see you and have a long conversation since I had a great connection yep. with my second favorite Aaron <laughs> on earth, which is Aaron, your girlfriend. Yeah. Yes. We hung out at a company get together. What was out. supposed to be just a passing like, Hey, I'm Aaron. Oh, Hey, I'm Aaron too. Well, 45 minutes later, we're lifelong friends. And now, I mean, we're planning vacations together. No, she yeah. is. She's a big ball of energy. She talks to anyone. Wow. Very social. Wonderful human. She had nothing I, good. No, she, she loved Aaron as well. Once she, once she heard that Aaron was on, was, was one of the hosts of this podcast. She said, she's can I come? she was like, can I come? God, I wish oh, I cause you met her. Cause you met her as well. At uh, Andrew's house? Yeah, it was at the Luau. Was yeah, the very, first people, the very first person we talked to was you. And I, she she I loved both of you guys, yeah. yeah. Oh, but she's wonderful. Especially Aaron, yeah. She yeah. was... Well... Just the dry humor. I, that's right down her ballpark. So. <laughs> it's not that dry. Wow. Uh, she's probably going to watch this, I assume. Yeah. yeah so, she, I mean, you want to talk a little bit about your future? Um... <laughs> The weather's been kind of gloomy, hasn't it? Mm. 
<laughs> I'm, I'm joking. Um, Just joking around. Yeah, no, she. Um, I'm joking. No, she she enters law school next year. Wow, that's um, exciting. She's applying for a bunch of schools right now. Yeah. Um, very exciting for her and I. She just. What was her undergrad? She's in a class of her own. Um, international business. Oh wow! Yeah, a lot then, of cool opportunities to go to law school and combine that. Yeah. Wow, She's that's very really great cool. individual. I'm jealous right now. Yeah. I would love to be an international lawyer, travel all over the place. That'd be awesome. Yeah, she's great. I mean, it's not that you're a lawyer. Like you could, it's not like I want to be an NBA star. Like that ship's probably sailed. You could pull this off. Oh yeah. You yeah. travel a lot and you're a lawyer. Just say, yes. Is... Just say yes. I got a lot going on now. Plus I don't know how to do anything. Oh, there's that. That's not good. You did say you'd be a good one. Right. We're, that'll be my whole gimmick. Like world's worst international lawyer. <laughs> They're like, we don't want it. I charge twenty dollars an hour yeah. for no just very advice. subpar no. advice. Yeah. 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 They're like, is that true? But like, I don't know. I don't know. I it could be true. Do you like her more than Aaron Rodgers? Mm, oh yeah. Yeah. Well, what about Aaron Ferry at the office? You better clean up that mess yeah, you just made. Dicey. I had said it was my second favorite Aaron, but I was pretty certain I was counting myself. So dicey. She's tied with you know all the Aaron's that we care about. Yeah, we'll just leave it very, very politically. Depends sound. on who's he, who's who's in front of. Yeah, I had asked Aaron Ferry to come on the podcast. She said that she probably couldn't. So uh, his Aaron's still number two for me. <laughs> she would love to come on. She can talk oh. to a, she can talk to a wall. So I'm having kidding. two people. She yeah. Um, I recently heard on a podcast that a guy had to, he's a podcaster. You mentioned that, um, that specific title. He went to jury duty and they asked him like, what do you do? He's a stand up comedian slash podcaster. And they're like, what do you do? And he was like, I couldn't bring myself to tell them that I was a stand up comedian because then it would lead into like, well, if I don't know you, then you've, it's clearly failed in life. It's the same thing he did with soccer. Yeah. Yeah. And so they were like, uh, I went with podcast. We're like, oh my God, that's way worse. No wonder they didn't let you on the jury. And so then they start like, well, would you say you're a writer or a creator or you're in the, like, what would you say? Entertainer, maybe. Entertainer. But it's, so there's so many of those things that if they don't know you, right? If you're not like one of the four comedians that most Americans would know, they're like, oh, sorry, it didn't work out. You're like, no, I'm hugely successful. Yeah. Mike? <laughs> Tell us a little bit about what you do at Village Caregiving. Well, I'm not here. Well, I will yeah, say this. It's changed a good bit from what you were hired to do, mm -hmm. and it's a really cool story. Yeah, but it's kind of um, floating around. that I'm a generalist slash specialist. I just like specialists. But anywho. This guy's in the CIA. Yeah. Specialist. Yeah. yeah. Very undercover. No, okay. Um, started in HR. Got brought on by Zach Wellman. Got yeah. here due to Chandler Stacey. Well, he, he opened the door. I walked through it. Um, so started in HR and then I happened to be located in the same building as Chris Sandania, head of the IT. And okay. I got caught up in my work one day, probably about two and a half, two months ago. And I was, uh, walked in, I said, Chris, is there anything that's like just monotonous that is almost like low level for you that you just don't really have time or care to do? And he was like, you know, I actually do. And so then he, after coercing with a few other people that make decisions, I suppose. He, he was like, Mike, how would you feel about, you know, kind of joining a little bit of IT teams? So I said, I'd love it. Because that's always kind of interested me, just technology, um, networking, on like physical networking. Not um, social. Correct. Interesting. Yeah. It's always okay. uh, just as a whole, just how how things work, um, you know, trusting the internet to do what it's supposed to do. It's kind of, in, it's always intrigued me. So that door got opened. Um, so now I'm HR slash IT, but I think I may start saying that I'm IT slash HR because IT has a way better title. Oh, okay. Not to knock. No, no, no. Continue HR. down that no, path. I don't want to no, knock HR. No, 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 no. I don't, but um, so IT slash HR is, is the role. Um, I love it. If there's it's, only it's room for one on your business card, though, which one are you probably putting on there? Because, I mean, specialist. IT specialist. IT specialist. Well, that's, do you hear the, moral of this story knew, you heard he it, it i mean I that's like, what oh, i'm talking boy. about all the time it's being <laughs> a teammate when your work's done for the day you don't check out he walks into chris and donya's office hey anything you got that i could help you with yeah and fast forward just a few months later not years months mike you've you've carved out this niche for yourself in the office that is indispensable now 
And frankly, beforehand with what you were doing on those HR tasks, I, I don't know exactly what it was, but I think we could have found lots of people that could have done that. Yeah, well, I was at, it's the, the task that I was first given was it was passed. It was like fourth generation, like somebody did it here. They moved on to bigger, and better things. They pass it down to the newcomer, so on and so forth. Right. So I was a newcomer that got handed the, the bottom of the barrel stuff. Still do it. But um, but that's kinda, how you make yourself indispensable in a company. You go yeah. and you carve out this role that we didn't even know needed to exist at that moment. And now, yeah. if you were to walk away, we're like, uh-oh. We got to replace it. It's an IT specialist. And yeah. you've worked hard at it and learned it and been a great teammate. I just That story speaks to so many things I like. It's, uh, it's special stuff. Good well, job. It's, Anybody it's, listening should take a note of that. Special notes from the specialist is what we call that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you. Well, I, it's, um, I almost feel like I'd be a fool not to take the – well, I guess no, go hindsight on. is 2020. Yeah. I mean, Chris, being around Chris, um, he's just like – he's a walking Google, I feel like. I don't know how much y'all have been around Chris and Donnie, but that, that guy's got some answers. So, like, having his knowledge right next door to me, it, I was even asking him, even whenever I wasn't even on the IT team, I would ask him just – general questions about technology and networking and all these little things. And so then it happened to just kind of come to fruition, I guess. So has he said anything about investing in the crypto? He does not. He has not. No, but I know that's a popular topic. Okay. I've heard what it, about I've heard investing in, in the AI? Take we are, notes. we are fans of AI. And I have all, take yeah. notes. What did he say? Exactly. It's a great tool if you know how to, how to use it. And did he say anything about where to put your money? Um, no, not, no, that's, Mattress firm. Yeah. There's a lot. We Salon. About. There's a lot of mattress locations. Yeah. Bet against the bills was what someone had wrote. No, that, no. Okay. Know. Continue. That's so, good. Yeah. So you're, you're there now. Are Let you, me ask uh, before we move away from, are you staying on IT? Oh, I'm living in okay, IT. So I can't get ahead. enough of it. Go Between ahead. the waffle and the AI and the, all the other IT terms that I use. Yeah. Um, I'm just ate up with it. I mean, plug me in is what I tell people. Yeah. I'm like a, I'm like a laptop. You go to Chicago this past weekend? Oh yeah. So you, you, cause you gave a talk about the waffle as well. Uh, right? Dave oh. Sindanya and Dave Mancusi and I gave a three headed presentation, which you, I guess you'll see in oh, well, Cincinnati yeah. Friday. Yeah. When Will. you, when you watch these three, all right. I mean, it's the Mount Rushmore of IT. Yeah. Okay. Except these guys are alive. Okay. Yeah. And they're up there and they're talking waffles and chat and google sheets and you're just like am i i mean i'm a i'm a i'm a a commoner among greatness is yeah. how i felt in that and I, i'm just notepad after notepad of information but you're in the nose so a lot of this stuff's going to be familiar to you yeah i've learned in the world of it there's a lot of acronyms okay and i think that they i think that these people have kind of congregated to make these acronyms to make the 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 common personnel not know like make you feel out of the know yeah but you're in now yeah. you're on the inside yeah. looking at us that yeah. don't I haven't know. been given the the rights to create any of these acronyms yeah that comes with some certifications and all this kind of stuff but i don't think you're wrong i think that uh the healthcare is kind of like that there's so many acronyms yeah. you can't even really get started till you have a glossary next to you and you search an acronym and then there's like four different meanings of the acronym yeah. yeah well so here's what i was wanting to touch on mm -hmm. is we talked about this very briefly in that presentation the waffle mm -hmm. in chicago and that is i i kind of made this joke but it's not really a joke Obviously, these are two IT gurus that yeah. sitting here on stage next to me in this meeting in Chicago, and I'm like, not. Yeah. And I say, so I've been really excited to give this presentation since back in the summertime because basically I went back to like IT college. Yeah. I went to tech college. <laughs> and you probably walked in sometimes, and I would just be sitting on Chris and Donya's uh, couch and they're just laid out and he's drawing on whiteboards yeah. all kinds of tech stuff how much i've learned in the last two three four months is something that's when you have a person like you say chris and donnie is like a walking google right yeah. and he's really top level really experienced like 20 years of like top-notch high level experience he's mm -hmm. not just a grad help desk level guy yeah it to take advantage of that resource, like you said, that's right. I mean, because when, how often do you ever come out with any degree 
at anything. It could have been law school. Was I ready to walk into a courtroom the next day? Of right. course not. You learn it in the real world by doing stuff and observing and having mentors that teach it to you. Yep. I don't have any doubt that you could become like really advanced at the IT just from how good Chris could teach you to do that. So yep. leaning into it and embracing it is genius. And I can't wait to see where you go from there. Yeah. That whiteboard, he's, he's a, he's an artist on that whiteboard. I'll sit out, we'll do the same thing. I'll sit on that couch and he'll just make these, this whiteboard is just colored. He's color coded everything. And it's just, yeah, he's just all around great guy. So, but anyway, are you, <laughs> I'm done talking about my tech prowess. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's high level. Yeah. And, Did, uh, let me ask you a serious question. Be honest. Whenever I was talking about all the tech stuff there at the Chicago meeting, yeah, were you a little bit surprised at how up to speed I was on it? I'm gonna be honest with you. Here's what my dead on my first concern was: he's going to get some questions <laughs> outside of this group. Someone's gonna be like, "Hey Jeff, real quick, could you help me with this?" And you're gonna be like, "Oh no, <laughs> I I know you've misunderstood. I gave my presentation, but I don't. I can't write code. Like you are so knowledgeable." on on the stuff that i'm like people's gonna think there's a deeper layer of understanding here where he's gonna get hit up with some stuff and be like well i don't know how to do it and they're gonna be like well you were so knowledgeable i could tell you like we're so invested as you said in your presentation you like this is not something you want to ask people to do without diving in and leaning into yourself so yeah. as uncomfortable as it must be to be the ceo to go over and sit down at you know Sonali was pretty new to the company when you did this you showed up and was like i don't know what this is and i need you to teach me i think you said teach me in a way that a person's never seen a computer before would be yeah. taught like yeah. bring it all the way down and uh so that i mean that again that's a testament to to you to to get into the base of no i thought i mean you well there at the end they didn't correct you one time um which is you know, I, I, yeah, so I don't have a deeper understanding. I can't write code, but I have a fundamental basis now that I can set some vision and continue to lead the company, which that was the problem at first. We needed to prioritize what are we going to try to achieve? Because there's like 20 things we could do in the IT world. And I'm like, yeah, I have no idea because I don't even understand what you're talking about. So I'm going back to school here and you teach me and I would just sit in there for hours and yep. hours and hours. and Yeah. How many of your help desk tickets do you think result in a turn off and turn back on? A lot. Wow. I don't want to give a percentage. A little secret just, here. Yeah, I mean. Okay. I, there's times when uh, a ticket may come in and, and like I feel bad almost saying, hey, have you tried to turn it off and back on? Because you, it's a pretty common troubleshoot, but like yeah. at some at some points – it doesn't hurt to ask. Yeah, I could not so. get Netflix the other day to load on my smart TV. And I'm like, I'm on the treadmill. I'm like, yep. if this thing doesn't load, I'm going to be able to finish this series. And I'm like, what? Like, oh, I could just unplug it and plug it's it back and completely it. cured it. It's always the cure. Yeah, a lot of times. For stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. But Either back that to that your or, point yeah. about how they, what you don't ever say, turn it off and on. You say, have you power cycled it? That's they, a good this one. had to yeah. be made yeah. up. So you're doing something a little harder. Yeah. Yeah. yeah fascinating yeah you know that is like an update a yeah, lot of things you know, turn off and on yeah. and then there it requires an update boy i'll tell you so. uh chris and donia's presentations got me scared to death i've uh, i've turned our internet <laughs> off at the house the hackers aren't getting us he did do a cybersecurity. yeah he? i've asked I've, I've asked my truck to come <laughs> offline i'm like i don't want the hackers getting us taking my identity it's real stuff isn't it yeah i just put danielle's stuff in everything now <laughs> i don't think that'll help i don't know all right, so I go by Danielle now if you email me. Michael, on a personal level, um, well, I mean, this is a professional <laughs> question, but boil it down to just you internally. It's my favorite question. I always ask it. What is something that you're trying to work on with yourself to change or whatever it's so that you can continue to grow and develop as a person professionally? I think it just comes down to discipline for me. I know that's a pretty basic and then you know, mm -hmm. cliche answer. So what does that look like for you? It's just... Um, just allocating my time in a, an efficient manner. It's just going from, I don't want, I don't know if this is a, no, go all in on it. Going fine. from where I've always worked by the hour to being not working on the hour. It's really, I've had to change my mentality on where to direct my time and I can get caught up talking to some coworkers for an hour and it's just like, what are we doing? So having to really stay focused and, and build a task list because 
I don't have the best memory at times. So I really have to try and get organized. So being disciplined and organized as an individual, not even, I guess you can take that outside of work as well. Um, just keeping a decent schedule, having a, a routine. Um, just trying to be a productive citizen, I think, is what I want to work towards. Because I think I've get I've been in ruts before and not to go too in depth. I don't know if I'm even answering the question, but just trying to just better myself as a whole. I think is the main goal every day. Gain a piece of information a day, one piece, to make yourself better. Don't know if that answers the question. Like so that. no, it does. Whenever you ask the question like that, though, and someone gives an answer that sounds kind of cliche, right. or whatever, like uh, to be more disciplined, to be more organized. It's not cliche at all. No. And the reason that I see that's just me by nature. I couldn't not be organized if I wanted to. Yeah. Like if you like Sarah one time comes to my office and is looking for something to my desk because I forgot some, and she's like, "Oh my God, what are you crazy? Like every little tiny thing in every drawer is like organized. Like you thought you might die tomorrow, and yeah. you want everything to be found a certain way." I'm like, "No, that's just so I can't turn that off yeah. when it doesn't come very naturally." I'm just genuinely curious. What is, I can tell it's, it must be hard work. You've got to work at it. Yeah. What does that mean? Like you try to physically organize things. You have to stop and make yourself put stuff in like a folder app. Like what, what is that? You know, if we're going to be brutally honest with myself internally, it just comes down to laziness what it is. I, sometimes I catch myself, I get home and I know, you know, Hey, I, I know the dishes need to be done, but sometimes the couch just looks pretty inviting. So it's just stuff like that. Just having to just get stuff done. I think that that's more of a, it's, it's a testament based on what you just said, it's a testament to your motor. I think that you have an internal motor that is just above average, but I don't consider myself average. I mean, I do, but I don't, I don't know. It's just, I've never been the most, on top of it kind of person. I've always just kind of gone with the flow, which like I said, is kind of created some, going with the flow creates ruts. I didn't even mean to do that, but, um, you see like a, a rut. I a got river. you. Yeah. Okay. Nope, 100%. Um, so it's just like, I have to cognizantly co be very cognizant of where my mind is at at times, just because sometimes I can just be, to be lazy. So, yeah. Um, well, I appreciate you saying that, yeah. that I have an internal motor, although I'm not sure I might just be, too obsessive about things like i want not only would i walk by the dishes if the coasters aren't like straight with the edge of the yeah. table i want it to look very nice and yeah. symmetrical everywhere that doesn't even I mean, cross like, it that you, you would think that's ridiculous that's kind right? of like ocd right that's yeah i guess form of it at least yeah mm. don't okay. have that in me i don't i'm never really my my apartment's not very or is organized. It's not very feng shui, I would say. Well, that we talked about that, I think, with maybe Brandon when he was on the podcast, which is that what you're describing right there, and I tell this to the kids, I tell it to Sarah sometimes, sorry to rat you out, but I was like, listen, discipline's discipline. If you can't keep your closet clean, I don't know how you're going to keep your mind and your work all organized. It's just all cluttered up with stuff. It's, it's about like a mindset. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I've kind of gotten into a routine where every every day I leave the office, I try to make my desk nothing on the desk. I try to make it to where it's almost like making your bed in a sense. Leave the desk where I come in in the morning, clean desktop, ready to go. So it's good. That's that's work. Yeah. That's the hard work. See, we we talk about this sometimes too. Like, what is something that's hard for you to do? I used to use this example of like whenever we would be building the company and I would stay up all night long and like push myself till the sun came up to where I felt half sick. Is that hard? I prided myself on it being really hard, but mm. the truth is that wasn't hard for me. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Right. That's not hard work. Yep. What's hard is like not losing my temper whenever I'm in an argument with somebody yeah. <laughs> like, cause that's, that for me is very, very hard. And, uh, are you willing to do really hard stuff? Like the hardest thing there is for you to do. Like tonight, it's, I'm going to have discipline. Every night I do blank, 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 blank because it's going to make me a better person. That It's hard stuff. So that's why I know it's work. I relate to it. Yep. Aaron, Mike, yep. I have a question for you. Oh, 
okay. This is an advice column question. Yeah, well, it's weird. Mike and I, every Saturday morning, we get a coffee together and we read the advice columns and kind of see if we answer them the same way or not. So this will be second nature to us. Yeah, I believe it. Yeah. The other day when Danielle said she stayed out past 2.30, I was thinking, hey, you were about to get up, start taking the paper. I the know. I told her that morning. This is, I was like, hey, I, I'm we're, I'm not staying in this hotel room all day. Like, Chicago's out there. You sleep if you need to. I'm going. Yeah. yeah. Okay. This is called a bumpy acquisition. Mm, okay. We acquisition. Know, we've, we've all had them. Anonymous question. My small engineering company has been acquired by a large company. Mm. My position is in senior management, and I am highly valued by my clients. The company that acquired us initially told us it was business as usual. Now it is treating us like a new toy. Mm. We can't contribute to decisions, even though we are the ones affected. I feel as if I'm on a slow-moving freight train heading for a crash I'm very stressed and unhappy as well as overworked and now undervalued. How can I convince the company that needs to build our trust and bring us along during this acquisition? Or do I just start polishing my resume? Mm. Anonymous. How can I convince the company it needs to build our trust and bring us along? I kind of think you just need a reform. Um, I think that like, it's got to be transparent. And they, they said it's going to be business as usual, but it's not. We both know that. So it's one of those things like business is not as usual or both, you know, this may be usual to you, but it's brand new to us. How can we work together to make it more efficient? That's how I see it. Is that, you know, you, you want to stay comfortable in your own environment, but at the same time, this is new, it's brand new to us. So how can we benefit each other? What well, I let's make it, let's make it personal. We got village sure. caregiving. We have, uh, you know, 60 plus locations across the United States. We buy, you know, Susie caregiving out of, uh, uh you know, um, what's a good town. Uh, give me a, a, a an off the map uh, American town. Oh, I would say it's gotta be Frisco, Texas. Okay. We're down. We buy Susie's caregiving out of Frisco yeah. and they, they've got their office staff there, three or four folks. And they come in and it's like, we really feel like we had it figured out here at Susie's caregiving. And we're like, yeah, you guys did great in Frisco. Uh, and that's awesome. We love you. You can stay on and keep your job, but we have village caregiving's way of doing things. And they're like, well, but you said you guys were a great company and we could still act how we've always acted. Like, yeah, but you still got to use our systems. You, we pay when we pay, we do what we do. And they're like, but you said that everything would, and we've done such a good job. We were so good that you decided to buy us. I'm like, yeah, that's really awesome, but we're not going to change the 60 plus for the one. You just got to kind of get on board if you're going to stay with us, right? That's what's happening here. The large company bought the small company, and now we're just trying to figure out how to make them all work in the same area. I think what's unfortunate is this guy has seen, or this lady has seen this company grow and had a picture of what things was going to look like it got acquired and now they're either going to have to turn into corporate engineering firm llc or he's going to have to find something else to do the big company's not going to change for the little one no and would be likely a fair statement to say it shouldn't i mean yeah. that's why they've had the success they've had yeah. they should listen yeah, maybe there's some good stuff there and change if yeah if it makes sense but by and large they're probably have some proven processes. I don't really understand why she says I feel, or he says, did it say he or she? Huh. Um, I feel as if I'm on a slow moving freight train heading for a crash. That to me almost sounds like, I mean, I need more facts, but is that just your attitude yeah, making that? Cause I, what I heard so far is that you're not contributing decisions, even though we are the ones affected. Well, I mean, you got acquired. I kind of wonder why. Maybe ask them why they sold out in the first place, or like offer, or let them let them be bought. I guess I don't know. I could ask the question: Why don't you feel like you're on a slow moving train to heaven? Maybe things are about to get extraordinarily good. Yeah, yeah. I would uh -huh. say there was a lot of influence there. Now there's not, and so there's an erosion of of a, of connectivity there. And this person is probably just seeing that coming down the road like every month there's something else that's that we're becoming more and more like that other company and they said this wouldn't happen and so they're just forecasting if the last three months has been less and less 
and more like the other company, then I bet the next nine months is going to follow. And before long, we're in this crash of uh, we're no longer compatible together. Yeah, and that's probably the case. Let's get real. I mean, I'm sure that they've, I mean, she says overworked and now undervalued, or he says very stressed and unhappy. It's it's not gone ideally, unless uh, sometimes the acquiring company, I wonder sometimes, yeah, because I've seen this elsewhere, wants it that way. If they can run you off, they don't particularly care. Yeah, flush yeah. them out. Which is eliminate the opponent. Really nasty. Why? I don't mean this in a disrespectful way, but what could be so stressful about being an engineer. I'm sorry. Ah, to my depends on the friends. Well, yeah, my. I if was... you're a sound engineer, big deal. If you're uh, <laughs> a, a drawing a building engineer, how stressful is it? I think you're deadlines, going... maybe uh, certifications. You have to get permits. I think there's a bunch of. I mean, what's funny is that my both my dad and my sister are engineers, and there's a good chance that they'll, they'll probably watch this. Okay. So no I'll disrespect. Your, I'll give them your number. Yeah, I'll have them get. I, we always lean into this. Yeah. Uh, let us know because I'm, I'm sure you just never see like the stressed out engineer in the movie. Like, oh my gosh, I just don't know. I've I've turned to alcoholism because of the stress from my engineering job. Yeah, it's usually like the finance. They guy usually guy. have like a, a you know a couple year old Volvo station wagon. <laughs> they live in usually a very nice home, a Subaru. You know what though, and this is not a joke. I've heard said before from reputable psychologists, for example, okay, that engineers are among the absolute very most stressed profession out there. Like a lot of core engineers, people will seek, you know, somebody to talk to because whenever you have infrastructure, for example, it could be a bridge, it could be a dam, it could be whatever. Like when you have disaster type level things that could happen and they're the ones that have to worry about it and also sometimes their hands are tied and they can't do what needs done and human lives will literally be at stake when like the 100 year event happens that's a lot that weighs on their mind so i guess that's it i could ask chat gbt why are engineers stressed out so much do you think it would go straight to train engineers like well because cars get why are engineers stressed out a lot they often face significant stress due to the nature of their work, which typically involves complex problem solving, tight deadlines, and high expectations for precision and reliability. I mean, I that sound like most, an engineer. That yeah. is the most general answer. We don't know what this person does for a living. Do they grow corn? You, you got a point. That was pretty, that was, I bet pretty, if you that was ask, like a horoscope. Yeah, it, it, do me a favor and ask what any, the person built, the, why the person builds tables is stressed out at work. Tight deadlines, deadlines, specific. problem solving <laughs> expectations for, yeah, but there's are a little bit, there's more on the line, I think in their work. I will say that. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess we talked about that enough. Okay. Let's, we got to start wrapping yeah, up. One so question wanna, that I have, uh, you, I mean, that was a question from anonymous in yeah. the times, but the way do you see these? Fishbowl. You ever, you ever, you know about the fishbowl? I've heard about it. Okay. What would you call the most emotional food? Well, what do you think that food is? Just mm. the most emotional of all the foods. Most emotional food? Yeah. Now you could take this a couple different ways. Yeah. It's got to be like steak or like some form of, of meat, like a cut. All right. Think about this. Yeah. Okay. Cause you think steak and you kind of think like celebratory ways, you know, it's usually something that you, you don't eat steak. I mean, you could eat steak on a bad day, I guess if you want to, but the way that I'm getting at is emotional for the cow, right? I mean, they're getting just slaughtered, dude. That's pretty emotional. So then, then you have to cook it and like, we're, we're sitting here enjoying it. Oh man, this is so good. But like little Moo Moo over here just yeah. lost their dad. So, I mean, it's like, how Where's are you rejoicing that? in the cow's presence if you really want to just take it back? So I think it's steak, mainly because you can, it's pretty emotional. It's usually celebratory. I feel like like whenever I have a good week of work, let's go to Longhorn. Good steak. Wow. Never, you've never really been depressed eating a steak. That's. So, I mean, but then you think about how it actually goes into it. Yeah. The emotions got, on both sides of yeah, the steak. Yeah. I mean, I feel for the cow. So. Not enough to not go back to Longhorn when you've had a good week, but yeah, enough every, to. Maybe every time. Think about it. Yeah. That I was do, the best answer I've ever heard to a fishbowl <laughs> question. 
I do feel kind of bad. The like bacon as well. I mean, it's just like pork chops. I but I, here I am. I love all those things. Oh man, that was awesome because you're so committed to this response. I didn't even know what I meant. I had for, I wrote that so long ago. I forgot what a thought was on my mind, and you just answered it like it's one of life's great things. <laughs> what an yeah. answer! I know. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I was going to go with the lobster at, at Red Lobster. Yeah, that's tough he's too. in there. And he's seeing all of his friends come by too, and you know he's just full of emotions. Yeah. Of every is. time they come by, I mean, you're looking. Like, you're with a lobster, like red lobster. They have the tank. Yeah. Like you're looking. Like God. I mean, what if you're you just, were? <laughs> what if you're at a steakhouse and you're out there looking at the <laughs> at the oh, sure. at the pasture? There's no way that's what I meant when I wrote that. Just well, looking at the demise in the yeah, eyes. Like man. I thought I meant like what makes you emotional. What's but then the that most doesn't make sense. emotional food? Oh, I don't. I mean, how do you take it then? What's your answer? I have no idea. You could say like sour candy. That's going to elicit a massive emotional response. Yeah. Dude, like the, 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 um, the, the wart heads. You guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Oh, yeah. the, yeah. Or that and the sour skittles. Yeah. That made, that brings way. pain. You know, the food that probably makes me the most emotional. Yes. Pizza. Pizza. I don't know. I don't know because whenever you get one, <laughs> so it's so similar to a steak answer. I guess that's why I liked your answer so much. I get a pizza that looks really good in front of me. I'm like, oh, yeah. I see a pizza commercial on. It's the only kind of commercial that can be made where every single time I see it, I'm like, my God, I want a pizza right <laughs> it's now. It's crazy, isn't it? I don't do that I with agree. anything else. I it's agree. like an emotional response to this food item. Yeah, yeah. All the ads I see, like, hey, buy a you know, like fidget spinner or something. I never once... I don't really pay attention to ads. But Geico. Right. I've li- I've literally seen. Well, Subway's done it to me once. I saw a Subway commercial, went and got a foot long. But like a Papa John's commercial, I don't even really eat Papa John's like that. But I saw it. It looked so good. Called him up. I had to have it. Got me the pizza stuffed crust. I don't even really eat pizza very often. But I don't care what I'm having for dinner mm-hmm. tonight. Whatever it is, if I saw a pizza commercial on that looked awesome, I'd be like, I would rather have that. Yeah. Yeah. Mike, let me ask you a question real quick before we take off. Do yep. you think it's okay uh, to wear a watch on the same wrist as your dominant hand? Absolutely not. It's got to be on your... has any, to be. Anyone in here? About, yeah, I mean, I'm... Watch people? It's a fun fact about me. I'm left-handed. I'm never going to wear a watch on my... Because, like, then I'm sitting here and I got to like, ride uh, on it. Do this. And if I go to throw something, the watch comes off. It could be. I don't know how good the, the class are. I don't know if they're high quality or not, but... I just think it's kind would of. Would you wear also, a low quality clasp watch? I would. You would. Okay. Yeah. So you're okay. Yeah. But um, another thing is like putting it on. Yeah. I. How would this you hand that? is not very. You know, I can't. That's it, just too nimble over it here. It looks just like the other one though. Well, yeah, I know they look the same. It's pretty deceiving. Um, but like putting a watch on, it just feels natural to put it over here. The That's same a thing great with, point too. Not only is it on the one you got to do all your stuff with, but, but then you then to put, it, to on. put it on yeah. with the wrong hand. It feels like a foreign hand. This, yeah. I mean, this right hand is... you, God, dude, you're killing the fishbowl. <laughs> I mean, absolutely. I love the fishbowl. Yeah, I'm all for this. Was that a unanimous response, by the way? Oh, there's... Or not. No, feel free to disagree. I did see that your wife had a watch on both arms the other day. <laughs> yeah, she's got like her nicer watch and then the one that does like tracks her heart and everything else. Yeah, those were different. Um, if you got two, it, then it's okay because doubling up on the same, you're totally ridiculous. No, no. Yeah, but you have to have a reason behind it, I think. Yeah. Like how she has it for to, to monitor right. stuff. I think if you're wearing like, you know, some of these, because I big fan of rap music. Some of these rappers wear like two, you know, watching each wrist and they don't even look at it for time or nothing. It's just like a flex jewelry. So yeah, at that point it's like, okay, I can see through that one. But if you're monitoring your heart and you want to know what time it is, get you a Fitbit. Kind of gets both of those going, but neither here she, nor there. She wears I'm not both. Judge a lifestyle. But Sarah wears both just because it's like a wedding ring, almost the sentimentality of it. like, she hates taking off that watch. Understandable. I, it was a gift for me years and years ago. So she's like, I'll lose it. I'm never taking it off my whole life. So now she has to wear the yeah. one that she actually uses on her other that's arm. A, that's cute. I like would you, you would you wear a watch on your dominant hand? No. And bracelets are okay. Well, even we got like, we got one maybe. Well, even something like this, like I if I were to put these, is that if I were to put these over here, it feel I've done it. it feels weird. Can't do it. Or like I, that you would think to put one on one so I'm even and balanced. 
Wow. Put it over there and see Not what a happens fan. here, buddy. Yeah, I got a bracelet on this one. You're going to feel so weird right now. Putting it on is a little bit weirder and yeah. slower. What if you just passed out? It feels so <laughs> It feels so strange right now. Completely reset. Take your watch. Take your watch it's right over, now. It's an overload. Watch and put it on the other wrist and tell me if you are feeling what I'm feeling. I don't feel comfortable at all. Did you abandon that watch in a city recently? Yeah, I did. I <laughs> traded with Levi uh, Yaman, our ED in Des Moines. Des Moines. Yeah. Just one night randomly over drinks, I said, hey, what kind of watch you got there? I liked his watch a lot. I said, I tell you what, I'll trade you for a few days till I see you again in Chicago. We switched him up. Yeah. I really liked it. Then he tells me that it was a like really special gift from his <laughs> wife. And I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. I cannot. He, you should have seen my stress level. He told you afterwards or before? Well, I I could have tried to give it back at that point. But I yeah, don't know. It's good that he told you after, I think. Yeah. Right. But, man, I, it had a leather band, so I couldn't shower in this. Mm-hmm. I mean, every day I had to be taking this thing off in hotel rooms and I was taking the band piece of it and like putting it in my wallet. So there was no way I could leave both these. I'd be walking down some sketchy streets there late at night in a couple of different cities. And I'd be like, if someone were to jump me right now, I would have to be like, here's my wallet. I can have my clothes. I can't give you this man's watch. I'm sorry. I got to be willing to die for this thing now. No. It, it was a whole thing going on. He asked me if I had seen you because he had your watch. And he said, I, I, I don't know what to do with this watch. I got to get this watch back to him. And I, so I Googled a local pawn shop. <laughs> and I said, I would just take it over there and leave it. I didn't know that you guys had traded watches. I, thought I, I ended up it. sitting down at his table. Mm-hmm. I don't even think it was even intentionally necessary. Maybe it was. I don't know. But he already had the, my watch off of his arm <laughs> laying on the table. And he said he had experienced the same thing. Like, I'm so ready to trade back because yeah. it's too much pressure to lose another guy's watch. It's okay. okay. Could I, am I able to ask a question? Or are we over time? Oh, let's I have do one it. question. Oh, okay. This is one of, my, one of my friends posed this question to me the other day. And it, it's, a good an, or it's a good question. Would you rather be overpaid or underrated? I'd love to hear your answer on that. Wait a minute. Why would I want to be underrated or overpaid? I mean, which I mean, which one? Oh, I'd rather be overpaid. I'd get a bunch of money. It, right. My my take on it is, if you're underrated, there's a level of respect that comes with it, you know. But oh, if you see somebody's overpaid, like Trevor Lawrence, for example, like you know, I don't really. It is kind of embarrassing. Like the third maybe. highest quarterback in the league, paid wise, and he's just not really, eh, you know. Okay, I so see. So it's like, but being underrated, there's a level of respect. It's like. You know, we acknowledge the work you do and we know that you're you're good. It's just that you're not getting, you know, in due time, your credit's coming. But somebody's overpaid, it's like... You're know. thinking like C.J. Stroud situation. They they weren't really sure where to take him in the draft you because he didn't that. test well ahead of time. <sighs> I think I'd rather be underrated. You're really, this is the respect thing. You're I, really, I think you have no respect with the overpaid thing. It's like you're getting, you know... What if you were overpaid, though, but then you took all your money and you just ran away to a place where nobody knew you anymore? It didn't matter. No, nobody's disrespecting you now. You just, just for the to... record, you're not planning on doing that, right? <laughs> In that scenario, I would be overpaid. Let me ask you a question. Do you feel I'm more so <laughs> underrated or overpaid <laughs> in my current role? Don't answer that. Well, I think, uh, going back to your original question. Hmm. He did start changing my mind on that. I'm backtracking yeah. There's hard. Some, and I get where you're, I mean, the simple person be like, oh, I'd take all kinds of money. For sure. I don't care what people think of me, but you got to live with it. Yeah. But, I don't like having the money I didn't earn, but I don't like being underrated yeah. necessarily either at all. Like I don't care about the respect that much. I'd rather be treated fairly. You presumably be underpaid as well. You got to think right, like right. take Deshaun Watson, for instance. Like he had his moment. <laughs> he, he was a phenomenal quarterback and he gets this contract in Cleveland and he shows up to be this, you know, Super Bowl winning quarterback that's going to, to get. And so he's paid as such. And that has not been the experience that, that Cleveland had. Like that surely lives in this guy's head every day. Like, I mean, every week the headlines are just, the, the fans are just booing him by the second quarter every game. You're like, man, yeah, alive. Hard to have a high happiness level like that, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. You got to still live with it. I think eventually it kind of, 
it just clouds your confidence. I think if you know that you're not performing, like, because if you're overpaid, then okay. your what your work is not adding up to the like the well. The let price me you're given. let me reframe this for you. Though. Every example you guys have mentioned is sports. Mm-hmm. They're getting booed publicly. The guy that's the accountant probably isn't taking crap every two seconds. I mean, and what's your answer there? You want to be underrated, Jim, down the hall that doesn't ever get a dime, right? Mm-hmm. Or would you rather be like? Oh, he thinks he's like good, but he makes a fortune at your work where you probably aren't that much different than anybody else. Well, yeah, in my head, I imagine this like um, this like Wall Street office with all these cubicles, and I just see this one guy who's overpaid over here, like sitting in his office, feet kicked up, you know. And then I think like, well, that guy, like, I I don't even want to go to, I don't want to do anything. I don't want to ride an Uber with him. I don't want to go to lunch or dinner, like. So then, but being underrated, this guy who's tucked away just doing the grunt work. You know, and he's, I think that he's acknowledged by his colleagues and you can get a sense of, I respect that that you're continuing the analogy out all the way to business, but it doesn't hit quite as hard. I'm going to say, at least so not quite, but, but that was, I I'm still with you. So you've got to be overpaid. You've, you've begun to turn me on that. I don't want to be either one. (laughs) (laughs) No, overpaid is pretty, pretty not great. Yeah. So, well, if you I, had to pick between my, the two, yeah. you're probably going with that. My friend asked me that question, and I I thought that was a great. It makes you think. Like, as soon as I asked question. it, I saw both of y'all just like, and it made me do the same thing. I sat there with my hand, my my phone in my hand for a while, and I was like, I don't know. Why would your friend ask you a question like that? Why it's do you hang out with chat. people like that? It's just a group chat. I see. Plus, yeah. you got to figure your future trajectories. Yeah. Exactly. Might. Yeah. Crisscross soon. All right, I'm going underrated. You wow. Got okay. So nice <laughs> well, you got me there. Cheers, guys. Yep. Cheers. Appreciate it. Thank y'all. Cheers, Wells. Yep. <laughs>